Hello everyone. I'm just for the APSC mains part uh, two means this is the second paper. You can consider it of the past paper we have already gone through and we have already discussed uh, some important questions in the first paper. So let's come to the first questions of today's second paper. The first question is, as urbanization and population growth increase, so does the amount of municipal solid waste, MSW produce, leading to a surge in unsanitary landfills that cause severe hazards. Examine. So, it was our second follow-up. Ah, GS paper one follow-up was he bore. Right, and ah, uh, our ah, uh, what do you GS paper three follow-up was he bore. This is our follow-up. So, I consider going to GS paper one follow-up. So, as a question, question as urbanization and population growth increase, so does the amount of municipal solid waste produce. Leading to a charge in the unsanitary landfills that cause severe hazards. Explain or examine. India, coming to the introduction part, India alone generates more than 1 lakh metric tons of solid waste every day. This data is very important. It will help us to use this data in other questions also. So, we got to know that India generates more than 1 lakh ton, metric tons of solid waste every day, which is higher than the many countries' total daily waste generation taken together. Large metropolis such as Mumbai, Mumbai, Delhi generates around 9,000 metric tons and 8,300 metric tons per uh, they respectively then india suffers from inefficient and insufficient waste infrastructure and also from increasing rates of solid waste generation per capita so amar bharatot kisuman large metropolis sohor jeneke mumbai generate uh, mumbai ki kisuman generate kore 9000 metric tons Per day, his support, huh? per day, his support was generated. Kore. Then, okay, Delhi generates around 8,300 metric tons. So, our logo, te, Amar India, inefficient and insufficient waste infrastructure. Arone. Solid waste generation per capita, per capita, mana potijon vitic bahigoyase. So, these are the problems that we are going to face. Now, besides the infrastructure and technologies, we must also concede that we have not addressed the issue from a systematic perspective. A massive fire broke out recently in the Brahmapuram dam site in Koshi, Kerala, has caught national attention. Amarnukata Kothaya Sivarato, Jetelekami. He problem to face no kor kibata disaster a higol ba hazard a higol tetialakami he to ignore koitabu. It a dekiluze India a cole one lakh metric ton generate kore solid waste per day his support aru kobole gole hea bohut country a keloge milai per day ziman ho was in tat kubesi amar India Bombay Delhi Nishina Sohor bohut besim waste generate hoi. Udhan is up a Mumbai, not 9,000, Delhi 8,300. He support Amar infrastructure, waste infrastructure, insufficient hoy, inefficient to hoy, our par waste, par capita waste generation bahigoyase. Aru logote ami etuk systematic weight solko, but systematic perspective for solko evolu ami jandianai. Etia olopote cosit eta gotona hoisil. Apnalokole hoi to abogoto, the uh, Brahampuram dam site of a fire broke origin. Tetiahe national attention a waste a waste inefficient or infrastructure. Ahise. Now, current situation of municipality waste in India. Tigase. 
मिन एमएसडब्ल्यू म्युनिसिपालिटी सॉलिड वेस्ट हां एतो मन राखिबो यात मय दिबोले थाकी गोल म्युनिसिपालिटी सो म्युनिसिपाल सॉलिड वेस्ट टुक एमएसडब्ल्यू बुली कम आगोले जिमानखिनि आहिबो डिस्कशनत म्युनिसिपाल सॉलिड वेस्ट मीन्स एमएसडब्ल्यू ठीक आसे नाउ करेंट सिचुएशन ऑफ म्युनिसिपाल सॉलिड वेस्ट इन इंडिया यू विल यू विल बी आर रिस्पोंसिबल फॉर सेग्रीगेटेड वेस्ट कलेक्शंस देन transporting waste into covered vehicle processing recyclable recyclables separating domestic hazardous waste and disposing inert material in sanitary landfills ekini amar urban jekini local bodies ase ta hati responsible a segregated way of waste collection now various studies reveal that about 90% of the msw is disposed of unscientifically in open dumps and landfills and creating problems to the public health and the environment then this is a very major concern because 90% of the municipal solid waste disposed of unscientifically in open dumps and landfills you know that will be really going to put adverse impact of human health and environment right over 377 million urban people live in 7935 towns and cities and generate 62 million tons of municipal solid waste per annum only 43 million tons of the waste is collected and this 11.9 million ton treated and 31 million ton dumped in the landfill sites most cities have confined themselves to collection and transportation of solid waste processing and safe disposal are being attempted attempt only in a few cases so bahut city to enuka hoy je matro collection aur transportation kore kintu hekinik je proper weight डिस्पोज करेफ डिस्पोजल बहुत कम भाव पर रिपोर्ट दिपिबी रिपोर्ट अल्सो रिभिल्स डेट ऑनलि सिक्सटी अब दिनिपाल सलिड वेस्ट जेनेरेटेड इन दाउंट्री इज कलेक्टेड अब हुईस टूवेंटी इज ट्रीटेड बै दिनिपाल अथरीटीज एगेन ए इम्पर्टेन्ट मीन इनफरमेशन सिपिबि रिपोर्ट you know that whenever we cite some reports data then that makes our content and reach so here the cpcb report also reveals that only 68% of municipal only 68% mon rakhibo mulokot repeat kori kobo pause kori pela ebar pohibo so only 68% of the municipal solid waste generated in the country is collected and tar upoy only 28% is treated by the municipal authority kar mote cpcb report mote thus merely 19% of the total waste generated is currently treated this appearance of urban water bodies and wetlands in the urban areas can be attributed to illegal dumping of construction and demolition of waste yar example ami amar nijor guwahati shohorote dekha pao so ei je urban water bodies bilak ase ba wetlands ase he bilak etia disappear hua dekhibole paisu because the reason is behind is the illegal dumping of construction and demolition of waste you can give the examples of our uh, one rama site only one rama site rama uh, wetland what is that can you tell me of course that is dipor bill right dipor bill is uh, being used as kind of dumping site not directly but indirectly in bin city of this wetland is Use for dumping those waste. Obviously, that is going to affect our uh, only one Ramasar site. So that is also not good. One more example you can give. If you have 
some examples you can also put here we can discuss right okay then some of the major issues some of the major issues uh concerning solid waste management absence of segregation of waste at source it was a bahut dangor problem hisabe dekha poa jay hetu hoyse amar jekhini segregation hobo lage solid waste tu hetu segregate mane hetu no hoy hetu hua porilokito no hoy okay so absence of segregation of waste at source lack of funds for waste management at ulbs and unwillingness of ulbs to introduce proper collection segregation transportation and treatment and disposal system lack of technical expertise and appropriate institutional arrangement lack of infrastructure and technology lack of involvement from the private sector and non government organization it is important our private sector involvement nai by ngo bilako involvement nai in differences of citizens towards waste management due to lack of awareness lack of community participation towards waste management and hygienic conditions lack of sewage management plan that is again very important jak jak mo important bli koisu that is important in the sense that um, that can be mentioned directly in our answer writing now about 70% of plastic packaging products turn into plastic waste within a short period unorganized vendors and markets existence of slum areas and corruptions are other issues of this MSWM right MSWM means uh, municipal solid waste management so any issues now arata mon mon pase hil haku namor wetland ekhona kotha apnaloke hunise niki if you heard about this you can mention about it in the comment section now what are the remedies to tackle this municipal solid waste state government should provide financial support to ulbs to improve their waste management system under various schemes and programs initiatives like you know smart cities mission amrut um, should provide significant funding to improve civic service infrastructure because see lack of fund issues is a very important concept in case of uh, this msw generation right in case of mswm by ulb because ulb as uh, 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 means not having proper fund so that's why is it is showing lack of interest so if proper fund is coming uh, from some initiatives like smart cities mission amrut then obviously its interest will be enhanced then key to efficient waste management is to ensure proper segregation of waste at source and i think it is a very important concern i have particularly uh, uh, seen in myself in different flats uh, location that they are not actually properly segregating the waste you know solid waste then liquid waste this that there are different types of waste so and also we uh, our municipality boards are providing different type of um, dustbins for different types of waste in i'm talking about our zurhat city okay in zurhat this this already been taken this initiative been taken but the how much the peoples are adopting this thing that is a very important concern so the key to efficient waste management is to ensure proper segregation of waste at source and to ensure that the waste goes through different streams of recycling and resource recovery as stated in the solid waste management rule 2016 we have different uh, means streams of recycling and resource recovery uh, then they are mentioned in solid waste management rule 2016 solid waste management rule 2016 okay so according to solid waste management 2016 rules if we follow them properly recycling and resource recovery then obviously this swm problem will be reduced and that is mainly focusing on proper segregation of waste at source again waste to energy waste to energy is a key component of solid waste management and this installation of waste to compose and biomethanation plants should reduce would reduce the load of landfill site see 
maximum times this dumping uh, happen on some landfill sites. So if we install, if we install waste to compose and biomethanation plant, then that will help the waste to energy conversation. Again, there is a need to encourage research and development so as to reinvent the waste management system in India. In this case, in this particular area, that is waste management system, a good research should be conducted. We have a lot of research institutes are here in Assam also. So why not uh, there should be a particular uh, means uh, vertical with respect to the waste management system. And there should be a separate department and proper crucial research should be taken place. Proper fund should be there to engage research scholars and students to do research on this, right? Professor should be engaged with some kind of projects related to this waste management system. The focus should be on recycling and recovering from waste and not landfill. Of course, the recycling and recovering on recycling and recovering from waste should be our focus, not the landfill. I mean, mati pelai, mati fill kora to amar aim ho bolna lagye. Zabo jutha ro ba, ye aporzon abila kami jodi mati pelai zabo, mati to full hoy zabo. That plastic waste was hai, zibila keti or decompose na hai. So that ke, how we recycle and how we recover from the waste, that should be our main concern. Further, it is important to encourage recycling of e waste so that the problem of EUS should not occur because EUS is a very important concern nowadays. And that is electronic waste we are talking about. In Bhopal, we have such US management system, right? US management, if I'm not wrong. Then we that type of thing should be adopted in our Assam also, in the Northeast also. In public private partnership models for waste management should be encouraged because private participation is very less. So public private partnership models should be there. Construction and demolition waste should be stored. Construction and demolition should waste should be stored separately disposed of as per the construction and demolition waste management rules in up 2016. So construction and demolition was again a different thing. So that should be stored and st separately disposed of with respect to the this uh, construction and demolition waste management rule 2016. So then responsibilities of generators have been in, uh, introduced to segregate waste into three streams. Weight that is biodegradable, dry. In dry, we have plastic, paper, metal, wood, ETC, then domestic hazardous waste like your means uh, uh, napkins, diapers, empty container of cleaning agents, mosquito repellents, ETC. So responsibilities of generators, those means who are generating, they should take the responsibility of segregating the waste into three streams. First, weight and underweight biodegradable waste will come. Second, dry. In dry, you have plastic, paper, metal, wood, this type of waste will come. Then domestic hazardous waste, napkins, diapers, then uh, co empty containers of cleaning agents, mosquito repellent, they will come. So three types, wet, dry, and domestic hazardous waste. And hand over this segregated waste to the authorized rig pickers or waste collectors or local bodies. Then sensitization of citizens as well as government authorities, community participation, involvement of NGOs, littering should be prohibited. So sensitization of citizens as well as government authorities, community participation, involvement of NGOs should be there. Littering should be prohibited. prohibited. Then international best practices should be emulated. Like South Korea is one of the few countries to separate and recycle food waste. South Korea, South Korea is one example, right? Separate and recycling the food waste. Then it has launched landfill recovery project like Nanjido recovery project, which have successfully transform hazardous waste sites into sustainable ecological attraction. So again, this is a very good example. These examples will again enrich our answer. So South Korea very successfully 
um, means um, successfully conducted one project that is Nanjido, Nanjido Recovery Project, Nanjido Recovery Project. And did this transform hazardous waste site into sustainable ecological attraction. So at uh, this type, this example, I think it will be very important. And we have to follow this type of uh, approaches in our India also. So in conclusion, we can write like that. Municipal solid waste management is one of the major environmental problems of Indian cities. The need of the hour, remember the keyword, need, the need of the hour is the scientific, sustainable and environmentally and environment friendly management of waste. So MSWM is one of the major environmental problems of India and the need of the hour is to scientific, sust uh, sustainable and environment friendly management of waste. So this is the answer of the first question. Now, our econ paper, or paper two, all of the Gholia question, so it will take time. Okay, and be patient. We have to, because these questions are so important that we cannot skip them, right? So this was the first question, urbanization and population growth. As the urbanization and population growth increase, so does the amount of municipal solid waste produced, leading to a surge in the unsanitary landfill that cause severe hazards. We have discussed about that. And few important things that one lakh metric tons per day generated 8,300 Delhi itself, Mumbai, 9,000 metric ton itself. So per capita waste generation increases. One example like uh, Brahmapuram dam, dam site in Kosi that a fire, massive fire broke out at had caught national attention. Then Urban local bodies are responsible for segregated waste collection, but it is uh, not taking this job seriously. 90% of MSW is disposed of unscientifically in open grounds, open dams and landfills. That, uh, that is a problem to public wealth, health and well, sorry, uh, environment. Then 377 million urban people live, live in uh, 7,935 towns and generate 62 million tons of solid waste uh, per annum. Then only 50, 43 million tons waste is collected, 11.9 is treated and 31 is dumped in the landfill site. And most cities only confine themselves to collection and transportation, but processing and safe disposal, disposal is not yet done properly. Then as part of CPCB report, 68% of the MSW generated is collected, while 28% is treated by the municipal authority. So 19% is currently treated. What happened to others percentage? Then disappearance of our urban water bodies like um, wetlands, is because of the illegal dumping of construction and demolition waste. We can give the examples of our deport bill, Silsaku wetlands also. Then major issues like absence of segregation. Why this uh, major, uh, some of the major issues concern solid waste management like absence of proper segregation of waste that source, lack of funds, then unwillingness of ULBs, then lack of technical expertise and institutional arrangement, lack of infrastructure and technology, lack of involvement of the private sector and uh, NGOs, then indifference of citizens towards the waste management, lack of community participation, lack of sewage management pain, then 70% of the plastic packaging products turning into plastic and waste within a short period, unorganized vendors and markets, and, and existence of slum areas, corruptions, this also fuel towards the Mm, MSWM. Then remedies like state government should provide appropriate financial support to ULBs. Smart cities mission Amrut should provide fund for this. Then um, efficient waste management is to ensure a proper segregation of waste at source site itself. And we for that different steep streams of recycling and resource recovery as passed the rules mentioned in the solid waste management 2016. Waste to energy should be done properly. Installation of waste to compost, waste to compost and biomethanation. You remember waste to compost and biomethanation plants at dumping site or landfill site. Then 
and research and development in this side should be encouraged. Recycling and recovering from waste should be our aim, not the landfill. Then public-private partnership model should be there. Then construction and demolition waste management should be done as per the rules in 2006 uh, mentioned in that uh, waste management rule. Responsibilities of generators should be uh, means to segregate the waste at source into three different types like wet that is biodegradable, dry that is plastic, papers, then nails, metals, woods, etc. Then domestic hazardous waste like napkin, diaper, and then mosquito repellents, uh, repellents and empty containers. So these three different types of segregated waste should be uh, properly handed over to the authorized rack pickers or waste collectors. Then sanitization should be there. Uh, littering should be avoided. Mangios participation should be there. Non uh, means private participation should be there. Some best practices from international example like Nanjido Nanji Nanji recovery project of South Korea should be adopted. So similar type of project should be adopted. Then MSWM should be considered very seriously because need of the hour in this case is the scientific, sus, uh, means scientific, then our sustainable and environmental friendly management ways of waste rules should be there. So now with this, coming to the next question, and next question is, what are the various natural and human cost factors contributing to the rise in global sea levels analyze their potential long-term impacts on coastal communities and ecosystem so is a various natural or human cost factors as a amar sea level to rise hoyse tar tar tak analysis kora tak mane ki ki reasons ase hetu analysis kora natural and human cost factors and also analyze their potential long-term effect. Now, sea level rise is an increase in the level of walls or sand due to effects of global warming and other factor. Yes, global warming is the major concern here. As per the WMO's state of the global climate 2020 report, the world sea level is rising at an unprecedented rate. The rate of global mean sea level rise double from 2.27 mm per year in 1993 to 2002 to current 4.62 mm per year in 2013-22. That is really a very means uh, dangerous or uh, you can say uh, not a good thing is happening so here we mentioned the report of wmo state of the global climate 2022 report state of the global climate 2022 report and as per this report 2.27 mm per year was in 1993-2002 that is the global sea level rise GASML, but now it is turned into from 2.27 to double, that is for around 4.62 mm per year in 2013 to 2022. So the sea level is rising at an, at an unprecedented rate. Now, alarming rate of sea level rise. Sea level have risen by, <coughs> sorry, 182 to 200 mm since 19. Hundred, nearly 5 to 0 0.7 percent of the world's land area is at risk of episodic coastal flooding by 2100, impacting 5 to 4.1 percent of the population, assuming there are no coastal defenses and or adaptation measures in the place. By 2100, the global population potentially exposed to that episodic coastal flooding will increase from 121.71 million to 176.27 million. So by 2100, because of this episodic uh, coastal flooding, that will impact a large amount of the population living on the coastal areas. Now, what are the causes behind the th sea level rise? You all know, we all know, I also, we all know that about the global warming. Now let's take some examples of, or let's mention some technical terms here. 
So causes behind sea level rise, first we are mentioning thermal expansion. When the water heats up, it expands about half of the sea level rise over the past 25 years is attributable to warmer oceans simply occupying more space. Zetia pani gorom ho e expand ho jai, ar tetia sea level rise ho Right? Over the two, the last process was over, it to amide khabole pa, the kipaole pa, so jai, oceans kini warm ho ko se, zar folot basic space occupy ko So when water heats up, it expands about half of the sea level rise over the past 25 years is attributable uh, attributable to the warmer oceans, simply occupying more space. Then second reason, the first reason what I have mentioned, the thermal expansion. Monodrakibo, term to thermal expansion. Currently to Gorom Hua Lokot related. Now second is the melting glaciers. Large ice formations such as mountain glaciers naturally melt a bit each summer. In the winter, Snows primarily from evaporated seawater are generally sufficient to balance out the melting. But recently, through recently the persistently higher temperature caused by the global warming have led to greater than the average summer melting as well as diminish snowfall due to later winters and earlier springs. So winters basically. Dedicate how is a spring to Kunkale Hose. So he's a snowing Homoikon Asil. That uh, that particular duration been reduced. So snow hobole in Nepal because of the global warming that creates an imbalance between runoff and ocean evaporation, causing sea levels to rise. So that creates an imbalance between runoff and ocean evaporation, causing sea level to rise. So second reason we have discussed melting glaciers. Now third, loss of Greenland's and Antarctica's ice sheet. As with mountain glacier, increased heat is causing massive ice sheets that cover Greenland and Antarctica to melt more quickly. Right. So mountain glacier will like Goromot big power. Ice skinny ice sheet is so it's skinny key. Melt very quickly. Now, scientists also believe that melt water from above and sea water from below is sleep seeping beneath the Greenland's ice sheet and effectively lubricating the ice stream and causing them to move more quickly into the sea. So, melt water from the above and sea water from below is seeping beneath the Greenland's ice sheet and effectively lubricating the ice streams and causing them to move more quickly into the sea. It the boat. Now, first, let me this position. You can see that here, Russia, right? And this is the Finland, Sweden, Norway. And this is the Atlantic Sea where you can see this Greenland north side of it we have arctic ocean then this side western side we have uh united states now you will see that this is the greenland and we have iceland here so this ice sheet of greenland now started melting and reason we have already mentioned that why because Scientists believe that melt water from above and seawater from below is seeping beneath Greenland's ice sheet, so effectively lubricating the ice stream from and causing them to move more quickly into the sea. So while melting in the West Antarctica has drawn considerable focus from the scientists because with the 2017 break in the Larsen I see myself glaciers in East Antarctica are also showing signs of this stabilizing. So overall, we can say that like Antarctica and in Greenland, ice sheets are gradually melting. So loss of Greenland and Antarctica's ice, uh, Antarctica's ice sheets are happening. And reason as we can mention like increased heat, melting of those uh, 
mountain glaciers and seeping beneath the Greenland's ice sheets and meltwater from above, pushing that uh, means uh, that's ice stream into the sea. So this is the region. Now, what will be the consequences? Consequences of the sea level rise on the coastal set. No, clearly, we have a lot of problems. When the sea level rise goes, you know, whoever living on the coastal sites, their damages or to their houses, damages to the life will also happen. So loss of habitat. First, we are mentioning here as loss of habitat. Almost three billion people are three billion people are living within two hundred kilometer. Of the coast and islands all over the world, this data is about the world. Three billion people within two hundred kilometer of the coast. A sea level rise will lead to loss of habitation, and hence leads to de-urbanization. Indonesia is planning to shift its capital from Jakarta, that is termed as world's fastest sinking city owing to sinking of land by 25 centimeter per year. You know about Jakarta, no? So Indo Indonesia already planned to shift its capital from Jakarta and Jakarta, Jakarta is facing like 25 centimeter per year sinking. So that is the world's fastest sinking city. It may also significantly affect tourism and recreational throw impacts on landscape. As for example, beaches and cultural features, obviously it will impact on the tourism and recreation because this if this type of landscapes are uh, happening. Then who will be, I mean, uh, happily go, go and enjoy in such recreation activities over the coastal sites. Then agriculture also, sea level rising will affect agriculture mainly through land submergence. Land to submerge, right? Soil and fresh groundwater resources, salinization, then land loss due to permanent coastal erosions with consequences on production, livelihood, diversification, and food security. Then coastal fisheries and aquaculture will be affected. The negative effects of sea level rise on the fisheries and aquaculture are indirect throw adverse impacts on habitats, like, you know, coral reef degradation. Coral reef degradation, hobo, Reduce water quality in the deltas and estuarine environment. Soil salinization. Soil salinization will be a very uh, risky thing because if salinization increase, then how will you expect a good agriculture out of this type of soils? Then impact on small island nations because of small islands, high coastline to land area ratio. So because of small islands, high coastline to land area ratio, most of their human settlements, agricultural lands, and critical infrastructure are at or near the coast. So there is a risk of losing all of them within very short span of time. Now, vulnerability of India to global warming, warming induced sea level rise. India perspective, what I mean, as per the study by Hyderabad based Indian National Center for Ocean Information Services, Indian National Center for Ocean Information Services, sea levels along the Indian coast are projected to rise between 3.5 inches to 34 inches by the end of the century due to the global warming. So 3.5 inches to the 34 inch, remember, that is around 2.8 feet, right? So. This, uh, this this is the prediction from Indian National Center for Oceanic Information Services, Hyderabad. So that will be a very major concern. And that, that according to that institute's data, this 3.5 to 34 inch uh, sea level rise will happen by the end of the century because of the global warming. Then India's coastal regions home to about 170 million countries 1.4 billion people are on the front lines of a shifting climate, experiencing sea level rise, erosion, and natural disasters such as tropical storms and cyclones. Cyclones so bohab And our India, 170 million people affected already. 
বহুত মানু আমার কোস্টাল এরিয়া থাকে বিকজ ইউ ক্যান সি দ্যাট ইন্ডিয়া হ্যাজ এ লার্জ কোস্টাল লাইন দেন লেটেস্ট এভিডেন্স অফ দ্য ভালনারেবিলিটি অকার্ড ইন মে টোয়েন্টি টোয়েন্টি এজ দ্য স্ট্রংয়েস্ট স্টোম রেকর্ডেড ইন দ্য ডিকেটস ইন দ্য বে অফ বেঙ্গল দ্যাট ইজ আমফান সাইক্লোন আমফান হিট এন্ড ফোর্সিং সেভারেল মিলিয়ন পিপল টু ইভাকুয়েট then climate change uh, is expected to uh, turn that at a significant section of mumbai by 2050 impacting millions of life so they are looking at on plan city korise ne bhi mumbai but still many uh, the millions of people are living on that uh, coastal bank so they will be impacted then india lost 235 km square of land to coastal erosion between 1990 and 2016 placing people's livelihood uh and homes in jeopardy with fight to save our place says during occurring bhalna uh, voluntarily or as a last resort to governmental intervention then scientific prediction suggests that 36 million indians are likely to be living in the areas experiencing chronic flooding by 2100 36 million see what will be the condition at that time sea level around asia in the North Indian Ocean has increased further than global average with coastal area loss and shoreline retreat. Similarly, mega cities like Bombay, Chennai, Kolkata are at very high risks of flooding and sea level rise with millions of people living here in the urban coastal areas. They are likely to be relocated to a safer places in the future. So in such circumstances, forced migration and displacement would be inevitable in the absence of well managed and preemptive relocation of population from high risk areas. Obviously, if, uh, some kind of well managed and preemptive relocation will not be adapted, then people will be uh, moving towards forced migration and displacement, and that will be inevitable. Then, what will be the adaptive measures? Like integrated coastal management, it will help in resource management following an integrative holistic approach and an interactive planning process in addressing the complex management issues in the coastal area. Coastal regulation zone notifications issued under Environment Protection Act 1986 will help in this integrated management. So this is the first thing. Integrated coastal management should be holistically approached then community ownership policy makers should engage stakeholders in the early stages of decision making and throughout the entire decision making process to enhance overall resilience in coastal areas and while supporting community ownership then barriers to urban areas rotterdam has offered a model to other cities seeking to combat flooding and land loss rotterdam has built barriers, drainage, innovative architectural features like water square with temporary pond. So this type of things can be adopted. Rotterdam, right? Monodakiba, Rotterdam to both that are important. Yeah, but who can question Rami Ahakuribo Paru? So Rotterdam has offered a model to other cities seeking to combat flooding and land loss. Rotterdam has built barriers, drainage, innovative architectural features like water square with temporary ponds. Then adoption to sea level life. And what we have just discussed are the adaptation measures. Now adaptation to sea level rise. Relocating utility infrastructure such as treatment plants and pump stations to higher elevations would reduce the risks from coastal flooding. So this is a kind of mitigation effort, right? You need to move the means treatment plants and pump station to higher elevation areas. Then understanding and modeling groundwater conditions that will inform aquif aquifier management, aquifier management and projected water quantity and quality changes. Then coastal re restoration plants may protect water utility infrastructure from damaging storm surge by increasing protective habitat of coastal ecosystems like mangroves and wetlands. Mangroves and wetlands conservation of army all of good to Then the injection of fresh water into aquifers can help to act as a barrier while intrusion resources groundwater resources. So injection of fresh water into aquifers that will also help to so equip 
আপনাদেরকে দিস ইজ দা রিসার্চ এরিয়া দেন দিস ইজ দা রিসার্চ এরিয়া ওয়াটার টেবিল আনকনফাইন্ড একুইফার কনফাইনিং বেড দেন কনফাইন একুইফার কনফাইন একুইফার সো এনেকা ধরনের হয় একুয়েফায়ার বিল কয়েকবার দেখাই দিছো এনেকা তার ভাল ফ্লেনত এইখন ভালকে দেখা পাব এয়া দেখিছে দিস ইজ একুয়েফায়ার এয়া লেন্থ লেন্থ টেবুল তার তলত আমার কি আছে একুয়েফায়ার রাইট দেন দিস ইজ দা আর্টিস এন্ড ওয়াল ওয়াটার টেবুল ইয়াত দেখা পাইছো ওয়াটার টেবুল একুয়েফায়ার ইয়ার এটু হয়েছে আর্টিস এন্ড ওয়াল সো একুয়েফার জড়িয়ে আমি লেন্ড প্রটেকশন মানে কি কোস্টাল এরিয়াত আমি করব এই এটা মেনেজমেন্ট সি ওয়াটার টেবল দিস ইজ দা একুয়েফায়ার ওকে নাও ইনজেকশন অফ ফ্রেশ ওয়াটার ইন্টু একুয়েফায়ার ক্যান হেল্প টু এক্ট এজ এ বেরিয়ার ওয়াইল ইন্ট্রুজন রিসার্চেস গ্রাউন্ড ওয়াটার রিসোর্সেস দেন লিমিটিং গ্লোবেল ওয়ার্মিং মোর ইউজ অফ রেনিউবল এনার্জি can help reduce carbon energy, carbon emission so if you if we generally move towards renewable energy then it will help reducing um, carbon emission so employ the plan of life then life you know na we should i should not mention about that i i think you all know nations must act fast to attain their ndcs and work on carbon sequestration so conclusion we can mention about paris agreement the paris agreement provides a clear vision on the limiting global warming and thus sea level rise there must be awareness among the representative of the public different agencies of the government and scientific industry and the communities on the threat posed by the climate change and the steps to counter it so sea level rise is a slow disaster that will become magnanimous and <clears throat> all steps must be taken to ensure that such disasters are mitigated so this sea level rise is a kind of slow disaster slowly it is increasing right but it will become magnanimous and that time it will be hard to means uh, deal with this so disaster mitigation plan should be uh, adopted beforehand so that's it and today's session i'm concluding it